what we want to show you here is uh, the challenge to build really good monitoring station in, in mountain areas. Mm -hmm. So basically what you can see, this station when it was built, the, 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 the main purpose was to monitor runoff. Within the area, there's some, some rain gauges distributed within the catchment. Catchment is about 1.5 square kilometers. And actually, the initial ideas of all the hydrologic uh, uh, monitoring here in the area was sort of to study hydrology of uh, forested catchment. So probably many of you know this old idea of the paired catchment uh, experiments. And this, this was the same idea here. And why this stream was picked. I want to point out a few things. Yeah? Um, the first one is, you can see a geoform, a Swiss plate geoform cross section down here. There are five um, uh, plate geoforms. And um, these are active, they're used for monitoring at the moment. This is the most simple way and the cheapest way you can put in an installation of this geoform. You just tack it onto a check dam. Yeah? And an installation of this inclusive, um, the electronics and the logging equipment will be between well, around 50 to 20,000 francs or so. Um, the big advantage is these, these systems are very robust and they're basically maintenance free when they are put in. So you have the initial investment, it's been put in 2002, so it's been running for 11 years now, and we haven't done any maintenance on this. It's uh, still working, same instruments, everything is, is perfect. Um, so this is this is a very easy way to to implement um, to to uh, put in a geophone system at the easiest and cheapest way. So if you have a check dump, very simple. Um, the second thing I want to tell you about is if you turn around, you see a big landslide scar. And this landslide went off in 2007. There was a big and, and, and problems with sediment uh, uh, transfer downstream. So, well, what you see here is what I, I, I told you briefly at the Vogelbach stop. So, we, at the first stop, mm -hmm. we were here. Uh, here, we have looked at this stream gauging station and the cheerful measurement. And so, this, this is the, the upper end of the Alp Valley. And here is the Elmbach, you know, here at the retention basin. Mm -hmm. And as I said, opposite on the other slope, there is another uh, catchment that is being monitored for rainfall runoff and, and snow, snow deposits. Okay, here you have an idea about the uh, hydrology. This is the average uh, yearly uh, precipitation, Vogelbach, Elenbach and Lippenbach. So, here, you have slightly more precipitation than at the bottom box. It's a little bit more than two meters per year. What's the denominator? Yeah. Oh, okay. You know. So that's about one hour maximum. Mm. I mean, no. it's very rapid. So. No. so you have standard some places, two yeah. places for yeah. whatever. Yeah, we have some reference points. Can you tell us a, a, maybe a word about, do you remember when we last met, um, you, you were talking about a camera that you use also, which is another method to, to determine topography. Uh, can you continue using it? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, because of the... Yeah, it's so because of the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Top of the deposited material there, it gets filled more or less every third year. So every third year we have to uh, take all the material out. The water depth here is about three meters, so you can more or less estimate how much material we have. And uh, at the end of the retention basin, we have also some uh, discharge measurements. We have discharge measurements 
uh, upstream the geophones and also downstream the geophones. Mm. You can see there the geophone plates mm. and you can also see downstream the geophone plates mm. the pipe hydrophone. Mm. And Daiso will talk to you a little bit later about that. Mm. So when we, when we have bed load transport event, the basket drives into the center of the plate. You can see maybe the sensor which is at the center of the plate, mm. one meter below the the geophones, mm -hmm. that's a, a sensor which measures the pressure. Mm -hmm. So that's the way the baskets know they should stop there. Oh. Okay? Mm -hmm. oh. And once the basket is there, mm -hmm. that sensor measures continuously the weight of the basket, the weight increase, mm -hmm. and that's the way we are sure that the basket is not filled up and we can safely take it away. It happens. Are you no, but the other is that, well, uh, it's not a but uh, it's been going to the advantage that uh, when you uh, install the microphone uh, mm -hmm. with the plate, uh, there's no difference when you put the microphone from the other side. Some but not all of them are the same. This is the fun. Very high. And then the samplers, the largest one is less than the other. Okay, so the other area another large one is coming to a bit more about the extreme event from 2007, show you the stream, the natural stream bed, uh, tell a bit more about the measurements we make up there, and in the end Danica will tell a bit about the seismic experiment she did um, this summer. Okay, and um, please don't step on the geophones and the devices because you oh, yeah. record fake events. And this is Alex. Alex is a graduate student of mine who's working on the bedrock erosion experiment. Alex will tell you everything you need to know. You won't have erosion, so this might not be the right model, but it's used very often. And a newer model that was developed is the saltation abrasion model. It means you have pebbles jumping, saltating on the ground, and when they hit the surface of bedrock, this will cause erosion. But to test that, if this is really right, outside the lab too, in the field, there is no was no data set existing worldwide at high, even at high resolution or high accuracy. And that's why we want to make transport. And below these slabs is two times the same device. There are pressure sensors here. So when I stand here, I measure my weight. So it's the vertical forces. And we have also two measurements of um, the shear forces. So if I just run over, I would also measure horizontal forces. You can see a, a schematic drawing in your guide on page nine. Yeah, that's, that, that's the whole box, how it works. So, and uh, a stream of a longer, um, or a longer stretches of the stream to look at transport lengths and things like that. Uh, we probably had about 2,000 individual tracer pebbles in there. These are RFID tagged, um, so they all have a unique number, electronic. You can read it out with an antenna. We used to have an antenna here um, to read out the... Uh, four main goals. So first I wanted to see if we can constrain or relate the grain sizes and the flux to the spectrum and amplitude of the seismic signal. We also wanted to try separating the water and bed load signals. And then also we wanted to test this uh, empirical method we came up with for uh, measuring the path dependent attenuation of the signal. So. All right, so those first two are pretty straightforward, right? They have all sorts of ways of calibrating the, or measuring the grain sizes and the flux here in the discharge, so that should be straightforward to look into. All the big centers are being organized, and now a lot of centers are coming around and they're going to be cut. And so that's why you tend to get more transport at lower by the way, just uh, you, you will see it. It's Again, they put a helmet uh -huh. 
and they make you sign that you will not fall and we have to go back to the cars. <laughs> So then we, we move to the next stop. Yeah, yeah, there are. Yeah, yeah. Okay. 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 Okay.